you've been looking here in this study at older patients with breast cancer. What were you trying to do? Well, we tried to, to find out in how far um, a more moderate type of chemotherapy um, uh, is effective in, in uh, improving the um, outcome uh, of uh, elderly patients with a moderate to high risk uh, early breast cancer. And we randomized uh, for that um, uh, 1,350 patients, uh, there, so that's the largest uh, uh, trial in, in uh, elderly breast cancer patients uh, so far um, to receive either ibentronate alone, uh, bisphosphonate, um, or ibentronate um, in combination with uh, six cycles of capecitabin. So it was a reasonable idea to treat them just with the bisphosphonate? Yeah, um, there were two reasons for doing, or three reasons actually for doing that. First, uh, uh, simply pragmatic, that, that we wanted to avoid uh, uh, observation c uh, control arm without treatment, that because that makes always uh, compliance uh, problems. The second is that um, we know, of course, that um, elderly women, they have a high risk for, for bone-related events, fractures uh, and osteoporosis and these things, and that can be uh, protected by giving a bisphosphonate and also um, we know from now uh, confirmed by large meta-analyses that uh, the use of bisphosphonates uh, improves breast cancer uh, survival. Um, so, so it's a good backbone actually, a non-toxic backbone for these patients. So you had quite a big study, you added or did not add Cape Cytobine, what happened? Well, um, unfortunately, um, we could not demonstrate uh, that capecitabine significantly uh, improved disease-free survival. We were seeing at five years an absolute difference of 3.8%. Um, the curve seemed to separate, uh, but um, as uh, probably as 80% um, of these patients had hormone receptor positive disease, um, uh, in these trials, usually you see treatment effects only very late, and we had a median follow-up time of five years uh, now. Um, so maybe that was a little bit too short, uh, but that's, uh, that's of course a hypothesis, uh, but it uh, strongly supports um, to, to follow up uh, these patients for longer to see in how far there is maybe a, a late effect uh, for capecitabin, but currently there is not. Were there any subgroups that benefited or, or might have benefited yeah. from capecitabin? The, the group that where you can observe differences uh, usually earlier are those with hormone receptor negative uh, tumors. Um, as I said, 20%, uh, so, uh, so not, not too many, 220 uh, patients in the, in the study. There was the, the hazard ratio was going into this direction, but um, the p-value also was there, not significant. So you were looking for a gentler therapy in these women, median age 71 years. Uh, what are your conclusions from these findings? Well, together with um, a previously reported study, the CLGB study, comparing capecitabin with uh, AC or, or CMF chemotherapy, where, which showed that, especially in hormone receptor negative tumors, uh, the combination chemotherapy was better. Um, I would say that um, in, uh, the more aggressive the tumor is, um, a monochemotherapy is not is not an option. Then we have to try to to somehow make um, a polychemotherapy feasible and tolerable to these patients. Um, whereas maybe in other in uh, in other more favorable um, situations, uh, it might be not a good thing to give capecitabine, but rather than no chemo uh, to avoid unnecessary side effects. Indeed, in the study that you've just reported, uh, it was reasonable to not give chemotherapy, just the bisphosphonate. So does this suggest that there's scope for advising or discussing with patients not having chemotherapy, perhaps more than has been considered? Well. Um, the disease-free survival was 75-78% at five years, so, so there is a substantial relapse rate. So these patients are really at risk. This is uh, number one. So um, there are patients that really require chemotherapy. Uh, second, um, the 
overall survival at five years. So, so at this, this time, these patients had a median age of 76 uh, uh, years. Um, uh, it, it was 90%. So, so these patients, they have a long life expectancy, so they will um, uh, experience uh, all the risk of breast cancer quite comparable to, to younger age groups. So, so with that, the decision to give chemo or not to give chemo should be according to biology. Um, we have all these um, gene tests around or we have other ways on, on uh, assessing this, but it should not um, be uh, concentrating on, on age, actually. Yeah. So not an automatic decision yeah. and needs to be individualized. What are your recommendations then, finally? to sum this up for doctors. I believe we, we have now uh, a lot more experience uh, on giving, for example, uh, weekly paclitaxel also in elderly patients um, in combination with, the, with then an anthracycline uh, in sequence. So, so it's something there, this is my practice. Um, I try to convince the patient, let's start, let's find out. Uh, we can modify the dose if necessary. But every cycle that you, that you get is actually beneficial for you um, in the situation where chemotherapy is indicated. So the very brief 10 second take home message about whether to use capecitabine and, and, and what to consider using, what is that brief message? In elderly patients requiring chemotherapy a monothemic chemotherapy with capecitabine is not an option. Uh, polychemotherapy has to be preferred.